Big time storylines. 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 Welcome back. Welcome back. Red Lizzo Sports Talk episode 161. And I am out here dolo right now. Producers are coaching, doing things. But that's all good, yo, because I got plenty to say. And I hope that y'all get to listen to it. So thank you for checking us out on YouTube. Uh, listen on Spotify. Check our Facebook page at Realism Pod on Twitter and Realism Sports Talk on TikTok. Thank you for the patrons that support the channel. Um, I might put a behind the scenes thing on there today. We're going to do plenty more. We got unedited videos that we need to upload. So we and the producers going to get with that. Um, and a special shout out to 360 Painting because all angles are covered with 360 Painting locally here in Harrisonburg. Best pricing, best, best customer service. As always, love for my commanders, uh, love for the Black Mamba, and all the love right there for my mama. Because on Relas on Sports Talk, we talk about sports from Hall of Famers to the local talent to the big time storylines. And the big time storylines we got, of course, we got the NCAA tournament. It's about to kick off Sweet 16. We got the World Baseball Classic, which was a classic ending, NBA MVP thoughts, and playoff discussion. And, of course, the NFL drama with the QBs and the free agents and some comebacks and available players. And then all the rest of the big-time storylines. You know what I mean? So, of course, I'm going to start the show. Everybody's about baseball. Yeah, so this baseball right here, this baseball right here was from the Virginia State Tournament when my son played uh, in, in 2014. Okay? My son... My son could play any position. He could do anything in baseball. Really, I mean, he was good at all sports, really. Humble brag, humble, humble brag. But anyway, talking about baseball, because it's a world baseball class. He wasn't the best pitcher on, on that, that championship state tournament team. Probably one, two, three, maybe, maybe, maybe the fourth, maybe. But as you can see here, it says he pitched six innings of no hit ball in the championship game. As the number four guy who didn't, we didn't even think he was going to pitch or nothing. But you know how it works. You can only pitch a certain amount of innings, a certain amount of pitches, whatever. So this is a big, big moment ball. You know, this ball right here. And then um, his first home run ball over the fence when he's in high school. Big balls for me. I keep all, I kept all his home run balls. I mean, I keep everything in his, whatever. So just the same thing with Fizzy. I got her cheerleading stuff over there and everything. But the reason why this is, brought up today is because he was a five-tool player. He didn't have to be the number one pitcher. He didn't have to be the number one anything. He was a five-tool player. He could play everywhere. He caught, pitched, first base, second base, third base, outfield. He could do it all, steal bases, five-tool player. So when we talk about five-tool players in the major leagues, we got to start with that boy, Otani. I told y'all about Otani. Everybody, I mean, we, I mean everybody knows about Otani. But last night, the World Baseball Classic, and I'm giving love for baseball. I'm wearing this Kobe Bryant Dodgers jersey, who's who's one of the owners is Magic Johnson, which we'll get to because you know I'm a Commanders fan. But five-tool player? Otani might be a seven-tool player. I mean, I don't even know. I saw this dude hitting, pitching, doing all kinds of things. It's kind of scary. It's kind of scary. So World Baseball Classic, in my opinion, is kind of like the World Cup. In a lower, in a lower form, of course, because soccer is like so globally everywhere. But the World Baseball Classic has got some juice to it. Me and the producer talked about it many times. Um, it's got a whole lot of juice to it. You know what I mean? So, and, and you know, baseball to me, baseball is like down here, kind of like they need to do something to build this up. But I think this is something that's going to build it up for multiple reasons. So we saw, we saw. Japan, who has now won three out of the out of the five World Baseball classes that we had. So that shows kind of a little dominance, a little dominance on the on the Japan part. You know what I'm saying? It was cool to see the United States in the championship game and to be, you know, that successful to get there and do the things they did. Um the popularity has to grow. Popularity has to grow because it was exciting to see. These magical moments. You couldn't have scripted a finality better than that. I mean, two players, Mike Trout, 
who was arguably the best player in baseball for a good amount of years and first ballot Hall of Famer, la di da la di da for the Angels, which the Angels really ain't been good in forever. You know what I mean? And then who else is on his team? His teammate. Oh, Tani's his teammate. You know what I mean? So then you get the bottom of the ninth, full count. It is Otani versus Trout. And Otani strikes him out. I mean, it's unbelievable. It was a Hollywood moment. It, it was like it was scripted. It was crazy. But the craziest thing about it is Otani, who is going to be a free agent, and you know he's going to be with the Angels, said it was probably the best moment of his life. What do you say? The best moment of his life was winning that, winning that trophy. And we've heard other major leaguers around say, this is more important than winning the World Series. And so if you're hearing that, that's that's people that's in the major leagues already, not the guys that's playing Japanese ball or whatever, whatever overseas, Korean, whatever, whatever. I think this shows that, hey, there's talent everywhere, and we need to be out there looking for it because this is great for baseball. If baseball can't bid off this, I don't know what else they can do. <laughs> I mean, they're speeding up the game. They're making the bags bigger, which is more offense, more stealing. You know, they're doing all kinds of things, which I commend baseball for. You know, we don't have to have steroids. Just enhance the game. Speed it up. You know what I mean? And I think baseball has hit a jackpot with the World Baseball Classic. And I know it's every four years or whatever, or is it two years? Well, it needs to be two years. But if you want to make it exciting, make it four. But I feel like you might miss on some stars, you know, saying doing four years. Soccer does it. Soccer's got away with it. I don't know. But who cares? Who cares whichever way you want to do it? I think it's exciting. Make it three years. Make it different than any other thing. The Olympics are four years. The World Cup's every four years. You know what I mean? Make it three. Make it different. Make it different. But seeing the cheering and the loud, yo, if you look at a baseball game and you just go to a baseball game, you see people sleeping, people getting beer, people drink. You know, eating hot dogs, chilling, doing all kinds of things. Yo, the World Baseball Classic, they were up every at bat. Every at bat, they jumping around. I mean, it's hype out there. It was crazy to see it like that. It was crazy to see it. And that's what brings excitement. That's what brings new fans and different things to it. If you want the younger generation to pay attention to your sport, you have to bring excitement. You have to bring jubilation. You have to bring this enjoyment, involvement, and everything else. You can't make it all slow. Like, oh, well, there's a there's a winder now. Oh, good slider. Oh, and three. Oh, oh that's right. No, you got to get that that flips. You got to. I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind the umpire. It's like, I don't mind that. I don't mind that. You don't want the umpire to do that. Swing the bat and hit the ball. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And on the upside, if you hit a home run, I don't want to see you beaming, throwing balls at the next player because you're mad because he hit a home run. Don't let him hit a home run. You know what I mean? I like it. Baseball can really jump off from this because the World Baseball Classic, bringing all those countries together, you're going to start seeing more. It, it helps everybody. It helps the sport because all these guys that are playing on these different teams might not have got looks, might not have got looks. And now people are looking at them like, yo, I never even knew this guy was doing that. You know what it kind of reminds me of? The NCAA tournament, which we'll get to later on where you see these teams, these small schools or whatever, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, look at this guy. Oh, oh now they're transferring to bigger school. Oh, oh, now the coach just got hired. Just like the coach from FDU just got hired now to Iona. That quick. It changes lives. It builds the programs. It builds money. It it brings, like, just talking points for everything. And I think baseball is going to do that. You're going to start seeing a lot of these players joining these major league teams. And it's gonna be and it's gonna be exciting because they're gonna bring a fan base <clears throat> from different countries that want to enjoy it. That want to enjoy it. I remember seeing like um what is his name? Hazuki, Hiduki, Suzaki, and you know, um all these different guys come and they were bring player, they were bring fan bases to these to these um ballparks and everything. Yao Ming brought so many people. Jeremy Lin brought Lin Sanity. <laughs> really? Lin Sanity? But it was big and it was broadcast everywhere. These are the things I'm talking about. If you want to make your sport that much better and that much more enjoyable, you have to bring excitement. And the World Baseball Classic did that. And I can't wait 
And I guarantee you next time the world if it's two years or four years, I need to check. I guarantee you the next World Baseball Classic, you will see even more notoriety for it. You're going to see more advertisement for it. You're going to see it on premium channels or premium time slots, building it up because <clears throat> in any kind of sport, the United States don't want to lose it. Nothing. The United States used to use college players for basketball. <clears throat> And I ain't going to bring up the Russia cheating game or whatever. But when they started losing, people got prideful. Hey, hey, you, let's go, USA. Let's go, USA. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what's going to happen again. Why is my hand like that? There we go. Whatever. Whatever. Anyway, so I think the USA, the next one, we, we saw some glares out there. We saw Trout. We saw Mookie Betts. We saw some guys out there. But I guarantee you're going to start seeing more guys, more guys out there representing their country, doing different things. And does that overtake the the, the Olympics? I'm not saying it does, but the atmosphere was totally different compared to any Olympic match I've ever seen or anything else. Um, yeah, and as a Mets fan, as a Mets fan, we lost our closer, Edwin Diaz, and, and we're supposed to make a run. We're supposed to make a run, and I'm excited. I'm still excited for the team, but that's a crucial spot to lose in an ex exhibition thing like this. But I'll tell you what, it's worth the chances you take for for everything it brings to the table. Just like Altuve got hurt for the Astros. <clears throat> you know, things might happen, but then again, things can happen in the spring training game. If it's meant to happen, it's going to happen, yo. You can't live your life in fear about that. It's for the betterment of the sport. If he's supposed to get hurt in the first, first game of preseason, just like a preseason football game, just like a preseason basketball, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? The WBC, the World Baseball Classic, is here to stay. And so everybody embrace it. And as a non-baseball fan, if you are, cheer for your countries. Cheer for the camaraderie. Cheer for just the whole Go competition. I love it. The competition was serious. This was serious. This wasn't no all-star game where people ain't playing, people ain't doing nothing. <laughs> people wanted to win. And did you see the trophy Otani pulled up? And then to finish it like that, USA going against the two-time, two out of four-time champion Japan with arguably the best Japanese player versus the best American player for years who are on the same team. And Otani strikes him out and says it's the best moment of his life and wins it for his country who's won three out of five. You don't think the USA wants to come back and get that? You don't think Bryce Harper might play next time? <laughs> you don't think these guys might play next time? Come on, bro. I'm telling you, the WBC is going to turn into an event of cultural aspects of just, just, just togetherness, and I love it and because it brings everybody together. You didn't see any harm. You didn't see anybody fighting. You didn't see any shootings. You didn't see anything. And they brought countries together to do this. These are the things we need more of in life. It's things like this. Sports heals wounds. Sports just changes your take deflects your mind off of the things that you worry to death about. It shows that we can have a common goal together. We can have a common goal together. And this wasn't my Terrell's thought, but I'm freestyling out here without, without the producer. You know, whether he's on the scene or behind the scenes, he keep it extra clean. But if I'm on the screen, I'm keeping you extra clean. So listen to what I say. Yeah, you know I mean. So the WBC, I thought it was a hit. Thought it was great. Um, the injuries, whatever, it's gonna happen. Whether it's first game, last game, preseason, whatever. Keep it going. Baseball, don't drop the ball. Don't drop the ball. I got plenty of these balls. Plenty of balls. My son's going to give me tons of balls. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's right. So since we brought up since we brought up the comparison with the uh, NCAA tournament, we at the Sweet 16 right now. You know, we saw, in my opinion, the biggest upset ever with FDU, who wasn't even supposed to be in the tournament because they lost their conference championship game, but the other team couldn't get there because of moving up in Division One and all that. that. You beat Purdue. Biggest upset ever based on what ranking you were, what ranking you were. You're the smallest team in the field. 
versus the player of the year who might be the biggest player in the NCAA. It's all mental, yo. I'm telling you, these are still kids, and it's mental because the past three seasons, Purdue has lost, and they have lost to double digit teams 12 or higher the last three years. And the reason why I say it's mental is because where, where we live at, oh, I live in Virginia. Oh, they lost again. They were the first ever 16th seed to lose to a, I mean, one seed to lose to a 16th seed. And guess what? They lost again. They lost again. They were a four seed, lost to Furman, still in Virginia, who was a 13th seed. It's mental. It's in your mind, yo. If you keep these teams close, I remember talking to my brother. We were literally watching the games. I said, if any of these smaller schools, higher rank or higher number teams, just can keep it close, it's going to be mentally draining on the other team because they don't want to be the next one to lose. And then we saw Arizona. Arizona coming off a gigantic win in the Pac-12 championship game over UCLA. Coming back, winning a hype. They doing big things, whatever. Then you lose to Princeton. 15 seed. Princeton, how many um, how many um five star recruits they get? How many four stars? Three star two. Now if we're doing a mental game, a mental challenge, they get all kinds of plays, but it's Princeton. And you lose. So that's what's the joy of the NCAA tournament is to see these guys on the stage that can change their lives, especially with NIL. You can get an NIL deal just by doing something in the tournament. Coach is going to get a new job by doing something in the tournament. These are opportunities. It's opportunities like this. And that's why I love it. Um, we saw Duke lose, Kentucky lose, Baylor, number two, Marquette. Shaka Smart was doing a great job. You know, Kansas, number one seed, defending champion Kansas. Now, granted, their coach wasn't there, but, you know, Whatever. And then we have all these players. We have all these people out here, like the Miami coach, who was the old, uh, who was the George Mason coach, right around this, right around this area, who took him to a Final Four. But anyway, he wants to expand it to like a hundred some teams and all this, whatever, whatever. I don't want to do that because I don't want to just water it down. I don't want to just add the NIT into the NCAA tournament. But I, I will say, put the CBI. Nobody cares about that. Move that to the NIT and take those other play other teams to the NCAA tournament. And this is what I mean by that. So the first four, the first four is the four lowest teams that are automatic qualifiers, like FDU was. They won their tournament. Sometimes teams got to lose a record, but you win your tournament, you get in. So the, the top four teams, or the four, the lowest four teams in that get in that. And then the lowest four teams at large people that you didn't win your tournament, but you're, you're a good team, whatever, whatever. But you're sneaking into the tournament. You get in there. Here's what I say. The four, the four automatic qualifiers is two, two winners. They get to play 16 seeds. Why don't you add four more teams and make those all games 16 seeds? And the reason why I say that is because, like I said, with opportunity, if you got eight teams who are the lowest automatic qualifiers, you're the lowest automatic qualifiers to make it, the lowest ones. Those eight teams battle it out. You can they can they can separate this one's gonna go to the south, this one's gonna play the what whatever way they want to do that. But you're on a stage that everybody's watching you. So you could be a school that nobody's ever seen before, and you could actually get a win or do something special. The coach could do something more opportunities for these guys to actually win. Yeah, we've seen 16 seeds beat a one a one seed, but it's happened twice in the history of the tournament. Twice. Twice. So this gives them an opportunity to actually win a game. And to be noticed, this most of the time, none of these players are going to make it to the NBA. This is your ch chance to shine and to tell your kids, look at me, I was on this and we did this. So I say make that four turn into eight. So each number one seed will be playing a winner of the play-in game, not just two of them, which is weird to me. So, the, and then right now they have the four lowest at-large teams play to get like that 11, 12 seed or whatever, whatever is going on. I say make that eight. Make the first four that get in play each other to be 11 seeds. And then the first four out, let them play to go to be 12 seeds. So you'll have two 11s and two 12s. So if you put 11 here, you put a 12 here. You put 11 here, you put a 12 here. Or vice versa, whatever regions, how they want to do that. But I think you could do that and then make it six, 76 teams. 
So basically, you're taking four more teams out of the NIT and moving them into the NCAA tournament. So if you look at the top four teams in NIT, you saw like um, Rutgers, and then you saw like, I don't even remember who the other team, the other, the other snubs that didn't get in, Vanderbilt, you know what I mean? Like those kind of guys would get in. Because when we talk about the snubs all the time, it's usually like two to four teams. Nobody talks more than that. So why don't you just add those into the first four and let them win to get in to be a 12? Then you got to play a five. Hey, if you win, you get to play a five, which makes that 12-5 matchup even that more fun. You know what I mean? So that was my opinions on the NCAA tournament since people want to talk about expanding it and all that. That my mama. Love you. You know what I mean? So that's my, my opinion on that. Um, when we come right back, we jumping right into the NFL drama. Jumping right into the NFL drama. And, and of course, it's going to start with these two teams. Can these two teams get together? Can y'all, can y'all, can y'all figure it out, please? We'll be right back. Relics of Sports Talk, episode 161. Okay, we back. We back. Just like I was saying about these two teams. Of course, we know it's the Packers and the Jets. So Aaron Rodgers is still a Packer. Still a Packer. He's running his mouth. Now he want to run his mouth because he's putting it in their court, whatever, whatever. Both sides, why can't they figure this out? What's going on? Green Bay can wait actually until the start of the season before the money is on his book. So they can just wait forever. The Jets are demanding. They're meeting their demands. They're picking up players that they probably wouldn't have picked up. They probably wouldn't have signed these guys. But they're doing it just to just to try to entice Aaron Rodgers or entice whatever to make this happen. I mean, the, the office for Green Bay's already said, we basically, we don't want him, but I guess if he goes back, I mean, I don't know. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? I'm sick of Aaron Rodgers. I'm sick of it. I want him to go to the Jets and fail because I'm sick of it and I'm tired of it. You know what I mean? The Jets are stupid. They let their car go, and they had a chance to get Garoppolo, which, yeah, I don't think that they're as good as Aaron Rodgers, but in the system that they have, with that defense that they have, that might not be all you need is somebody that cares about that locker room. And we saw Derek Carr go through all kinds of stuff with John Grew that year or whatever and still went to the playoffs. We saw Garoppolo, you know what I'm saying, with all this scrutiny, whatever, 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 still go to the Super Bowl and still go to NFC Championship games. You know what I mean? And still just hold us up together. Sure, the injuries are an issue with him with a dot. But Aaron Rodgers ain't, ain't no spring chicken. He ain't no spring chicken, and his ego makes him even worse to deal with. He don't want to work in the offseason. You got brand new receivers now. Miko Harmon just signed. You know what I mean? You got new receivers. Sure, you got your one guy there, and you're trying to get your tight end. But so what, dude? The Jets, you need to stop it. Your owner, you need to stop being a Jerry Jones, Daniel Snyder type dude, and let them do their job. If you're going to give up all that in your draft picks, go get Lamar Jackson. Because I don't know why nobody's calling about Lamar Jackson. Nobody's calling. Still nobody's calling. Nobody's talking. There's no nothing. Nothing at all. So the question is now, if nobody calls, will Lamar Jackson sit out? I said he should have sat out last year. Last year, just in case he got hurt. Sure enough, he got hurt. This is what I'm trying to say, Tommy. I'm trying to say that. Um, Would he force a trade? Would he force it? He ain't talking about nothing. I ain't heard him say nothing. I ain't heard him say nothing. I mean, can it? Can you stay and salvage the relationship? I guess money can salvage any kind of relationship when it comes to these football players or any sports for that matter, or any kind of any kind of job really. You know what I'm saying? If you guys throwing money at it, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. But I feel like this is getting personal now. But like I said, he is Baltimore, and if, and if things work out, I'm sure he would stay there. But they got to get him something. They got to get him some help which we'll get to some free agent people out there. But um, it's interesting. But I think the Jets should just flip-flop on Aaron Rodgers and screw him over and do that. Another team I keep saying, I keep saying, the Lions, you got two picks. You're right there. I mean, the dude from the Eagles, Gardner Johnson or whatever, the cornerback said, this Lions team is better than my last team. And that last team went to the Should have you had Lamar Jackson instead of Jared Goff? What do you do? Yeah. What do you do? You get two first round picks. Oh, 
You ain't got to give them both in this year. Give them the later one this year and one next year. So what? You're going to win. So your draft picks going to be late in the, in the first round. Do it. What are you doing? What are you doing? Texas, same thing. Texas, you're getting all these pieces. People come to y'all one-year deals, which I don't understand how they – Singletary's coming. Tight end from Dallas is coming. You got wide receivers coming. Like, what? Why? To the Texans? To have Bryce Young throw you the ball? I mean, what's going on? You got two. You can do the same thing I just said with the Lions. Panthers? I say the same thing to y'all. What are you doing? You get number one pick. Yeah, you get CJ Stroud. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. You can go get one of these free agent wide receivers to go with Adam Thielen and that stud defense with Lamar Jackson with the QB whisperer at your coach and win. That division is winnable. Even with Carr on the Saints, it's still cool. It's won it last year with Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, XFL QB. Go on, bro. Really? Getting rid of McCaffrey. And you still almost want you were one game away. The NFC is weak right now. All these teams in the NFC need to jump. Jump. The Colts. You've been without a quarterback forever. You've been, you had Peyton Manning. You were blessed. You had Andrew Luck. You were blessed. Now you done went through a, a merry-go-round of, of, of rehab and replacement players. You got an opportunity right now to go get it. Jonathan Taylor's right there for you. Your offense is stepping up. Your defense is right there. You're going to blow your window, Colts, and your division at <laughs> Yeah, the Jaguars, everybody's, everybody's preseason hype pick and all that, but let's get the ball right there. You better. You're right there. These teams are driving me crazy. And, and, and then my last team, Washington Redskins Commanders. What is going on, guys? Guys, everybody in our division made the playoffs. We were one game out. One game out. Chase Young played one game. We've revamped our offensive line. We've gotten players. We're getting players. You give us a quarterback? We're right there. What are you doing? New in, in new ownership group. You get Magic Johnson. He wants to buy he's part of the group. Magic Johnson, Lamar Jackson walk in the room. We're credible again. We're credible again. What are we doing? And you're sticking it to the uh, other owners. I ain't saying you got to give them six-year guaranteed contract. Give them a three-year guaranteed money. I don't care. Give them a five-year deal. Three of the years are guaranteed, and he gets his $200 million. I don't care. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. You do these things. You need to do these things, dude. Your organization is horribly ran. People look at it as a trap. They don't want to go there and all kinds of things. Your division, everybody made the playoffs but you, and they made upgrades. And they made upgrades. The Giants are getting wide receiver help. They got Waller at tight end. The Dallas Cowboys got Cooks that helped C.D. Lamb, and they got Gilmore on defense. You know, and the Eagles, they've lost a lot, but they're still, they were just in the Super Bowl, and they upgraded their running. I mean, I'm just saying, like, this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity to do these things. I don't understand what's going on because there's players out there that can help teams, and Lamar's one of them. Other ones that can help the team, Odell had to work out in front of player, uh, coaches, personnel, whatever. He sneezed on Twitter and was like, four million. <laughs> I can't do it. Well, you ain't going to get 20, homie. You ain't going to get 20 at all. You need to be like Juju and go and take your little two, three million one-year deal and then get a $30 million deal from the dumbass Patriots for giving you Juju that money. You got to humble yourself and do that. And I think if you want to win and you want to do what you did for the Rams, yeah, we already heard about the New York or New York Giants going back for the union. Don't do it. The Bills, that could be a spot going out there to play with Diggs. The Vikings, the Vikings have your old offensive coordinator. So you know his scheme. You know everything about him. That could fit. But my thing is the Chiefs. The Chiefs just got rid of Juju. And Miko Harbin, they got room. They got room. Kadarius Tony, who can't stay healthy. And Marquez Van Van Dan Scantley, that scares you? No. If I was Odell, I would jump at the chance to be with the Chiefs before somebody else does, which I'll get to. Okay, I'm going to get to it right now. D-Hop. 
I don't know why the Cardinals want to get rid of him, but D-Hop right now, D-Hop, you need to win to, to, to explain how great you are. People don't realize how great DeAndre Hopkins is. He's played with no quarterback for so long. You go go to the Chiefs right now and say, yeah, I want the trade right now. Go be that guy right now. Do it right now. Go be there. Or go to Josh Allen and do the same thing. You need to go to a contender like that and say, I can be the difference maker. Go to the Bills and say, I can be the difference maker in how you beat the Chiefs. Or go to the Chiefs and say, I can be the difference maker and help you outscore the Bengals since they stole your left tackle. These are the things that have to be done. Don't set the media. People say, well, go to the Panthers. Nah, nah, nah. Why? Why? Go to, the, go to the Ravens. Yeah, the Ravens there, but you don't know. It's, but you want Huntley throwing you the ball? Neha, Odell, one of y'all better jump real fast. One of y'all better jump real fast. Speaking of real fast, I didn't even know Cam Newton was still running. Cam Newton go put some out there talking about I'm throwing an Auburn's Pro Day. Talking about tell me how these randoms keep getting jobs. I feel you. I feel you. And they talking about ain't 32 MFers better than me. I feel you on that too. But here's the difference, dude. Cam Newton, dude. You need to shut your mouth. Shut your mouth because I, I agree with everything you said, but you shouldn't be saying it. You should be working. How these randoms getting jobs? Because they ain't running their mouth. They're not running their mouth at all. At all. You know, we heard we heard from Ben Roethlisberger that the 49ers tried to get him up and get rid of Brock Purdy. And he didn't go. And now look, Brock Purdy kept working and then what? They talking about he could have took the job if he didn't get hurt and all these different things. Shut your mouth, humble yourself, and say, hey, I'm willing to join any organization Backup, start, or whatever. Anything I can do to help the team win. There you go, my friend. There you go, Mr. Dad. I mean, that, I mean, come on, dude. That's what you got to do. If you really, if, if it's really about getting back in the league and doing something because of uh, the joy and passion of playing the game, that's what you would do. Obviously, it's about, look at me. I'm Cam Newton. I wear scarfs on my neck like a little woman. I wear purses, and I get my eyelashes done like Cam Newton. That's what it is. It's about you being in the limelight, and you ain't. That's the problem. You need to be like the old boy from West Virginia who was a second-round pick who got humbled in the draft, Geno Smith. Because Geno Smith was laughed at. Laughed at, put away. Yeah, he rode the benches being backup quarterbacks because why? He shut his fucking mouth. He never said a word. He shut his mouth. He got the opportunity to play for Seattle when they got rid of Russell Wilson. He said, have faith in me. And Pete Carroll... Gave had him faith. He did better than Russell Wilson by a mile, and now he got a contract. Sure, it's not no eight year guarantee, whatever. But he got a three. He got a decent contract that's that's built for what he did last year. Would they draft another quarterback, maybe Richardson, to take over his job later on? Sure, but so what? So what? Geno shut his mouth, and he reclaimed, reclaimed the guy we thought he was going to be. Comeback player of the year, doing different things, and now we can look at Geno Smith and say. Yo, you remember when Geno Smith played for Seattle when they traded Russell Wilson and destroyed Russell Wilson, beat him head-to-head and had a better year? You remember that? We're going to remember that. We're going to remember that. Good job to you, Geno Smith. Cam Newton, you got to hush that up, baby. You got to hush that up. Is anybody going to be interested? It depends on how he carries himself. Same thing that would happen to Colin Kaepernick. It became too much about you instead of the joy you have about playing the game and the passion. We love passion. We love passion. Why do you think people love Brett Favre so much? This guy threw the most interceptions or whatever, whatever, because he looked like he enjoyed playing. Tom Brady, same thing. He's the GOAT, but he enjoyed playing. You can look at him. Phillip Rivers. You can see these guys that that enjoy with playing. Win, lose, or nothing. They don't want to lose. They're going to give it all. Cam Newton, you out here with scarves on, purses and everything, makeup, talking about, huh? these randoms get jobs because these randoms are shutting their mouth and putting it into work. You on Twitter doing things. Just saying. Just saying. All right. And the next guy I want to talk about is Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt out there. I know the Eagles got Penny, but Kareem Hunt was linked to them for a long time. Um, the Bengals, I mean, the Patriots, they just got James Robinson. I don't know, but they love scat back guys like that. The Buccaneers, I don't know. The Chargers, if Echo goes. But I gave it away already. It's the Bengals. 
Joe Mix is out here shooting little kids or something going on, beating up women again. Yo, go get Kareem Hunt. You got your offensive alignment. You stole it from, from the Chiefs. This is the opportunity to go get it right now, Bengals, because those rookie contracts are about to start coming up. Joe Burrow's got to sign his extension. You need to go in and get it now. And I think Kareem Hunt would take a decent deal to be with a contender like the Bengals. Bengals, go get Kareem Hunt right now. Right now. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, they both beat up women, so at least one of them's going to get to play. <laughs> All right. So, Sweet 16, I know we jumped away from the – after I was talking about the field. But Sweet 16, right now, I'm going to give y'all a break. I'm going to break it down to you. I'm going to break it down to you in one second. Your picks, who I think is going to win, and the strategies you, sh- you should have. All right, welcome back. Welcome back. Rounds of Sports Talk, episode 161. NCAA Talk. NCAA Talk. Okay, Sweet 16. Michigan State. David, that's your team. Let's go Sparty. Coach Izzo. They going against Kansas State, number three seed. I think this is going to be one of the highlight matches. Big time matches. Coaching, players, whatever. I'm not going to tell you who's going to win until, until I go through all of them. Arkansas, who just coming off the big emotional win off Kansas, plays UConn, who, if you think about it, UConn was picked as one of the teams that could go all the way when they're healthy. Florida Atlantic, you ain't really played nobody at all. You ain't really played nobody. Tennessee coming off a big win over Duke. You're still missing your, your point guard. He's out, so we'll see. Gonzaga versus UCLA, three versus two. I think this is probably the biggest Matchup of the weekend, UCLA experience. But you got Timmy for Gonzaga experience. Big time matchup. One of the two number one seeds, Bama. They shooting their way to the, they blasting their way to the top against San Diego State. I don't know if San Diego State can score enough, but we'll see. Miami, whose coach said they need to expand it to whatever, is playing the other number one seed, who I thought their best player wasn't going to play or sneak. Houston might be one of those teams to watch out for. Who I thought it was going to be out. And then Princeton, the team I talked about with no stars, going against another Big East team. And I'm a Georgetown fan. I'm not biased, but Creighton is another one of those teams that are that are solid all the way around. They have an inside game. They shoot threes. Very good coach. And they shoot free throws. Big time game. Xavier, who I thought was going to be out already. They're tough. They're playing tough. They're playing, going against a team that I have far in the tournament, all in the championship game in Texas. Um, I think Texas is just versatile. I think their cards are spectacular. And I think their inside game is strong. And I think they played in the toughest conference in, in the country. Beating Kansas twice and in the championship game. And we saw Kansas bow out. We'll see if Texas can hold on. So those are all the matchups right there. All the matches right now. I don't have to tell you the winners because I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to be the first time ever in history that every lower seed wins. Sweet 16, every lower seed teams. Michigan State, Kansas State. Kansas State wins. Arkansas, UConn. UConn wins. Florida Atlantic, Tennessee. Tennessee wins. Gonzaga, UCLA. UCLA wins in overtime. Bama versus San Diego State. Bama. Miami versus Houston. Houston. Princeton versus Creighton. Creighton. Xavier versus Texas. Texas. All lower seeds win. I'm calling it right now. All lower seeds win. Cinderella lost her slipper. The mushroom guy or the pumpkin guy ate it. Something happened to e- evil stepsister. Sold it on eBay. I don't know. But this, this, the slippers are gone. Slippers are gone. All the lower seeds win. And that's what it is. I was going to get to some NBA talk, but I might save that for uh, for Friday night to get some fellas on to that. And we're running a little, about 40 minutes. So I'm just going to give you my Terrell's thought right now. Actually, I'm going to give you Terrell's thought in just a second. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you for listening on the podcast on Spotify. If you're watching me, you're watching me on YouTube, and I'm making Facebook expressions during the breaks. <laughs> but here's my Terrell's thought, um, and it's going to be about LeBron James. It's going to be about LeBron James. Again, and it's not about his scoring record or anything else. 
So we look at LeBron James as a Laker fan that I am, Kobe fan that I am, right here, Kobe fan that I am. You know what I mean? I I tend to have a dislike for Mr. King James. Not a dislike, but a I'm not going to give him as much love as others. So I'm going to start off with, he's been a Laker now, which was a tough pill for me to swallow, having my adversary join my team. Um, so from 2018 to, to present, um, he's been he's been there. So that's four years, not counting this year. So in those four years, Mr. LeBron James, who was killing it in the Eastern Conference, going to six straight finals, doing all these things, destroying the Eastern Conference. Eastern Conference, he's... LeBron, whatever team he goes to, he's doing these things. You know what I'm saying? He goes to Miami. I'm going to take my talents to South Beach. And you lose to Dirk Nowitzki <laughs> with the Heatles. But then you win two championships with Miami with a star-studded Hall of Fame team. Anyway, and Ray Allen saving your bleep. Ray Allen saving your bleep. Anyway, then you go. You go back. You go back to Cleveland. And great job for you. Things worked out. And Draymond Green got suspended. And you got to win. You got another trophy. I, I'm not going to bring up all the things that he could have only one. I'm not going to do that to him. We're not going to do that to him. Facts are facts. He has these championships. Okay? So you got three right there. You chilling. Then you say, you know what? I'm going to L.A. I want to be a Laker. I want to be big time. I want to be on films. I want to do things. You want you want some of that Mamba mentality back there. You want to be thought about like Magic. Because people compare you to Magic. They compare Kobe to, to Jordan. But now it's a comparison of him and Jordan being the best, which you can't forget about my guy. But anyway, so you join the Lakers. You've been there four years. You ain't even make the playoffs two of the years. And this might even be the, this might be the third year you ain't making. It's the playoffs in the East. You missed twice already with the Lakers. This could be the third. The one year you did make the playoffs, you lost in the first round. First round. Okay, so, you know, we did. you did win one. So we look at it as the year Kobe Bryant was assassinated passed away, whatever you want to call it. There was a bubble. There was COVID, all kinds of things. You played part of the year. You took off a few months to rest your body. And then you happened to win in the bubble. I'm only happy about that championship because it was the year Kobe passed away. Now, whether things were or not, like when – Cleveland got won the lottery and got him, or when New York got the lottery and got Patrick Ewing, or the Patriots with not a left. I mean, we know how sports are. There's things that seem kind of, but I'll accept it because I'm a Kobe Bryant lover. And y'all in the Lakers, who are my team, won the year he passed away. So if you want to put a band aid on that wound, cool. But that's been your only success, sir. That's been your only success as a Laker. You know what I mean? And I look at it like we look at Kobe and we look at Jordan and we saw so many players that were supposed to be the next one of them, Grant Hill, Harold Miner, all these different guys that were supposed to be the next Jordan, guys that were supposed to be the next Kobe. You know what I'm saying? And then we started looking at it. Now, now that now that I look at it, we're like the guys that were supposed to be the next LeBron. You know, we, we don't see many people because not many people are, are compared to LeBron like that because he's multifaceted and everything. But one guy was is Zion. And we see what's going on with him. He can't stay on the floor. He cannot play. It's worthless. I told him they should have traded him before they gave him that big extension a long time ago to New York because they would have been suckers to do it. Um, So maybe I should be GMT instead of GM time. I mean, what's going on? But I'm just saying. So what I'm trying – so <laughs> it's hard for me to say this. But I feel like as, as fans of sports and as fans of greatness, because 
I'm a Kobe guy, and and there's nothing but greatness with that. I I I try to breed greatness in everything I do, everything anybody around me does. We strive to be the best. Period. We strive to be the best, and I can bring up a thousand more things, but we strive to be the best. Anything it doesn't matter what it takes. I feel like we're getting to the point where we need to start looking at things and say, I need to appreciate every time I see LeBron James play. Not that I'm saying he's better than X, Y, or Z. What I'm saying is he is great. He is going to be somebody that our kids or our grandkids say, dang, that guy right there was something else because he is special. He is great. He's a freak and everything else. But the injuries are starting to add up. Injuries are starting to add up. Um, people talk about, oh, he keeps himself in great shape and everything. Injuries are starting to add up. And I've, I'm getting to the point where it's like, are we going to be robbed of something special, him playing with his son or or him doing something else like we were with Kobe? We were robbed of that. And when he came back, he was a shell of himself. He wasn't the same player. I don't want to see LeBron do that because I've already seen him be a shell. <laughs> see him be a shell. Don't go back to being a shell, dude. I mean, you know, I just don't want to see it. I'd like to see him do something else play with his son for another organization, whatever, and go out in the limelight and say, yeah, we did it together. Peace out with King Griffey Jr. and King Griffey Sr. for the for the Reds. We did the Reds, but we going to do nothing. But it was cool to watch the two together. It's cool to watch the two together. Because when he was in Seattle, he was big. He was the kid. He was rocking. Was prettiest swing in baseball. Prettiest swing in baseball. He was my second favorite player behind Daryl Strawberry, the Mets. But you know what I'm saying? So when I think about LeBron and my Terrell's final thought, we need to embrace him and, and he needs to humble himself and say, yo, this could be some time. I need to whatever, whatever. I think that would help his his legacy as well as the people that hate him like myself. I think that would give us a little common bond. Like, okay, you are kind of, you know, humbling yourself a little bit. Let me appreciate you a little. And now he and he can say, don't look at me. I'm going to South Beach and hate me all the time. I'm human too. Because like people hated Kobe in the beginning. People hated Kobe. Then the, then the rape accusation and all that stuff. People didn't like him. People didn't like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You know what I mean? So I think this is one of those things that we should we should just be bigger, be a bigger person to say, I want to watch this guy play. I was I was blessed to watch him play when he played with Cleveland against the Wizards in a playoff game. I was blessed to watch him play. I got to see him play. Jordan play, Matt, everybody play but Kobe. So that drives me crazy. That's something that's going to stick with me forever. Um, but appreciate LeBron James. Appreciate these guys because the next faces coming up might not ever get to show their faces. We keep talking about John Morant. We don't know. Zion Williamson, he can't get on the court. Steph's going to be gone. Look at these young guys. They're going to be gone. Embrace what you see embrace greatness and have that mama mentality and everything else yo thank y'all for listening i appreciate y'all for checking it out subscribe share talk about us baby if you want to be a patron and support us you be on the screen every episode please let me know man we try to do big things out here real little sports talk episode 161 we're out thank you world baseball classic good job appreciate y'all thank you